know what I reckon some of the most useful things in the garden are from both a design and a practical point of view? Retaining walls. Whether they're large or small, timber, stone, or masonry, you can use them to bring an area to level, allowing you to create gardens, lawns, and pathways. I'm gonna add two low timber walls across here so that I can make a pathway to make it nice and easy to get into our garden. The wall on this side is gonna be 400 millimeters or two sleepers high, and I'm gonna inset a step into this section here. And on the downhill side, it's only gonna be 200 millimeters or one sleeper high. And both sides are just gonna taper back into the natural slope of the hillside. The construction technique I'm using is best described as post and rail. The posts, or uprights, are going to support the rails, the horizontal sections. So what do you need to build a simple timber wall? Sleepers. All of them are treated pine suitable for in-ground use. You'll need screws. Now because I'm adding a step, I'll need a mix of 75mm, 100 and 125mm bugle batten screws. Quick set concrete, at least one bag for each post hole, and there's a post hole every 1.2 metres. The looser the soil and the deeper your post holes, the more concrete you're going to need per post hole. And before you go digging any holes, check with dial before you dig to make sure there's no services in the area. I've had my report come back and I'm good for Telstra, gas and water, so I can start digging. I'll need to put a bit of drainage in behind my retaining wall. Now, normally that means I'd grab myself a big roll of agricultural drainage pipe, but I've found this cool new product. This is called Stretch Drain. Looks like it's only a couple of metres long, doesn't it? Well, this is in fact 16 metres of 65 millimetre drainage pipe. Grab one end and it simply expands out and it can bend around all sorts of corners. So much easier to handle than wrestling with a giant roll of pipe. You just cut it to any length you need, or squash it back down, and then you can just fit all the different bits and pieces you need onto the ends of it to join it into virtually any pipe system. First, our set out. I'm running a line in keeping with the wall in the garden and the width of the existing entry. The easiest way to get it accurate is with a string line, and then use some set out paint. And it's time to get digging. I'm using a technique called cut and fill. I'll stockpile the material I'm removing and use that to create levels and fulfill behind the wall. I'm also carefully lifting and saving some of the turf for reuse. All my services surveys came back telling me there was no pipes in the area. But what do I find? One very old and rusty pipe. This is why it pays to take care when you're digging, even if you think you know it's underground. Now I'm 95% sure that this is a redundant water pipe because the only pipe that's supposed to be here, according to the surveys, was a gas pipe further out that way. But I'm not going to take any chances. What I'll do is I'll adjust my levels a little bit and I'll cover it over and leave a mark on the wall so I know it's there in the future. Well, thanks to my mystery pipe, I've had to change plans a little bit. So what was going to be dead level is now running uphill slightly. I decided to put in the downhill wall first to allow me to more easily profile my soil off. It just gives me a line to follow to get my excavation right. And it's a lot neater than having string lines around that you're getting tangled in. The wall behind me will still be dead level. It's just this one, which will be the path profile, will have that slight uphill slope. At the far end, I'm adding some steps. I'm going to build my step here and then drop it into place. Now normally in the past when I built something like this I'd use bugle headed batten screws which are great for this sort of job but I'm going to try these new timber construction screws from Buildex. They've got a couple of distinct advantages over normal bugle batten screws. The head's like a flat washer. That means they pull the timber together really well rather than burrowing in the way a normal bugle batten screw does. And the chunky thread lets them drill in fast and really pull and hold the timber. The steps are a pretty simple structure. Lay a sleeper section flat as a tread, then screw another section on behind as a riser. The next tread then screws onto the back of the riser, giving you comfortably sized 250mm treads and 150mm high risers. Drop the steps in, check levels and fix off. The first post is simple as I can use my steps for positioning. Drop the post in, fix it off, then quick set concrete in place. Well, that's my steps and my first post in. With the first post in, I can use this to double check all of my lines are running straight and I can mark out my next post holes. And my post holes proved a wee bit more difficult than expected as I hit rock, so out with the demo breaker. Okay, the posts are in. I've used my long level as a guide to keep everything flush. When it comes to putting your horizontal sleepers in, they need to go behind the posts, not in front. The pressure exerted by the soil uphill needs to be carried by the posts. That's one of the main roles they play in your wall. 
they're load bearing. If you put your sleepers in front, the only things taking all the load are the screws and chances are they won't hold over time. Sleepers in, I've trimmed the bottom one down to fit. Now I just add lots of screws to tie it all together. Now the drainage, I've run the pipe through, just stretch it out, some gravel on top if you need it, and then lay filter fabric down before backfilling with soil. Now here's a tip for you, use an old bread crate on top of your wheelbarrow as a soil sieve to get rocks and roots out of the soil you'll want to reuse for the pathway. Use a landscape rake to spread the soil, and the back of the landscape rake is actually designed to help you get your soil level. This is the fun, fast and easy part of the job, laying the turf. And a tip, if you've got a straight edge and you're laying turf, run along the straight edge first and then trim everything else in later. I'm on the home stretch now. What do you reckon? Well, that just goes to show you what an amazing difference a simple wall can make.